Uh, it's about a project, so the project in the car pass peninsula. And um, actually the reason why I'm doing this is I fell in love with this place uh, when visiting it first time, 2008 or so. Um, it's a wonderful you know, landscape, nature, uh, especially now in these days when everything is green. Uh, so I advise you also to have a look once for, you, for yourself. So it's where the green arrow points. Um, this is now, of course, a map showing Roman Cyprus. So in the Roman period before, Afendrica was called Urania, at least uh, the wider area. This is an identification that goes back to the 19th century to an American scholar uh, named William Hogarth, who uh, traveled to Carpas and Basing, or based on written uh, documents, ancient written documents, uh, he came to the conclusion that the site mentioned Urania in the written documents must be in this area of Afendrica. So, yeah. so this is a few years earlier actually than the identification of the site as Urania, um, very famous uh, survey of Cyprus, mapping of Cyprus by Kitchener, and he shows a family car here, and this is actually the survey area, including this hamlet ex arcos and Draconidas. And Afendrika is also, you know, can be called maybe a hamlet. The name Afendrika goes back to a Turkish word, Efendila, meaning basically lords, uh, which was given to the area. Efendila, hmm? Yeah, which was given to the area after the conquest in the 16th century. Uh, still there today, uh, remains of early Byzantine churches, in this area here, and, well, church, uh, churches which probably date more into the medieval period, uh, being here, and also here, all of them deserted, basically um, decayed. So this is the, the area that um, I surveyed, uh, partially by myself, only partially with the help of the Department of Antiquities, I mean, this is an official project, um, well, allowed or permissioned, given permission by the Department of Antiquities, and with a few interested uh, colleagues of my former university, Cyprus International University. So you have to imagine that um, with the ground survey, basically, we walked um, field by field, acre by acre, uh, and forest by forest. So the aim um, is to document basically everything that uh, has something to do with human activity by ground and by an aerial survey. Aerial survey means with a drone um, to collect, rescue small findings being on the surface, to clarify the location and distribution of remains or traces of settlements, so basically to understand where exactly uh, human activity took place, to try out to you know, clarify the chronology of these remains or the continuity, interruptions, etc. And then maybe to say something about the rural economy and maybe also trade connections uh, within Cyprus or overseas. As a process, um, I can show this here. The first step is the data collection. This took a long time. This is, we can say, maybe 99% completed now. Uh, the other processes um, are still ongoing. I mean, depending on which subject I focus at the moment, I'm still processing the data, uh, or I'm already reached the analysis of the data. Uh, in a very few cases, I came to some kind of conclusion or uh, result. So I will give you now some examples about uh, data collection, what kind of data you would encounter 